perhaps the first thing to note about Forrest Fenn's hidden treasure is that it is no longer hidden. The treasure has been recovered. The contents, some of it, if perhaps most of it, has been auctioned off by Christie's and seeking the treasure is no longer a thing. But people are still looking for it and that just cracks me up. Uh, human beings being what they are, they're not going to trust what they actually see. They're going to, to assume that their desires uh, trump demonstrable reality. So there's actually people, a few that I know of, still looking for the treasure chest. Even though we have excellent evidence that the treasure chest has been found. <sighs> people, I, you know, anyhow, enough said about humanity, the, you know, it's already been said. The second thing to note is Forrest Fenn is dead, so it is very unlikely that he's going to hide another treasure chest. I assume that Forrest Fenn is somewhere out there in the afterlife telling tall tales to, like, I don't know, gods, angels, demons, whatever, you know. Anybody who has an uh, is an audience. Well, was this time when I went fishing and I didn't catch anything. Anyhow. So, if you are looking for the treasure, <laughs> I suggest you stop. Uh, other things to note, um, the person who found the treasure um, was sued by Forrest Fenn and, or Forrest Fenn's estate, um, subpoenaed actually in a lawsuit brought against Forrest Fenn and his estate by uh, um, several questionable people, I shall say. I don't want to, you know, call them names because that would be cruel. One of the bastards is named, hold on here, <sighs> Terry Combs who has sued Forrest Fenn's estate, asserting fraud. And if you're wondering about the legitimacy of that uh, lawsuit, one of the defendants listed is the singer Taylor Swift. Oh, it is presumed that nothing will become of that lawsuit. And if any lawyer actually filed that in any court anywhere on the planet, that lawyer needs to be censured. Maybe stop being a lawyer for a year or so to teach him or her a lesson. <sighs> there is another asshole, bastard so-and-so, named Jamie McCracken. Mr. McCracken has sued Forrest Fenn's estate, alleging that every time he, Jamie McCracken, came close to the treasure, Forrest Fenn moved it. Apparently, McCracken believes that Forrest Fenn was monitoring closely Jamie McCracken, and every time, you know, Forrest Fenn saw that McCracken was really close to the treasure. Forrest Fenn would rush out and move it someplace. And then McCracken would have to look for it again. And then when McCracken was close, Forrest Fenn rushed out and moved it again. And apparently the argument is, and the lawsuit asserts, Forrest Fenn moved it four times. So, oh, Jamie McCracken, if you are out there somewhere and you're like not in a 
straight jacket in some facility, you know, mumbling about Forrest Van being, um, I don't know, really cruel and mean to you. Um, go fuck yourself. With a stick, preferably, and choose an eye. Ah, <sighs> goddess. <clears throat> the treasure chest location, past tense, where it was placed, that location is known to, as far as I know, two people. The person who found the treasure knows where it was placed. So, um, I mean, he's given interviews, etc., etc., explaining not where it was. He's not going to, as far as I know, reveal that information. And their second person is Miss Sarah Davis, who is a Parks and Recreation Forest Ranger. After the treasure was found, Forest Fenn, Airman Fenn, sought advice from Ranger Davis regarding if the location of where the treasure was was revealed, would that that site would probably be a tourist attraction. I mean, people who were interested in the treasure would, you know, they would like to know. Perhaps they would like to go and visit. Um, that means tens of thousands of people, uh, potentially. The advice was regarding if it would be ecologically disastrous for mobs of tourists to show up and see where the treasure chest was. Um, Ron, uh, Park Ranger Davis assured Forrest Fenn that yes, making that site a tourist attraction, you know, like putting a bra brass plate or something on the location, you know, the location where the Forrest Fenn treasure was hidden or placed, hidden and placed, would indeed be a ecological disaster inside the Yellowstone National Park, where apparently the treasure was placed. So, the um, location has not been revealed to protect that um, site, and that did not make people not sue for his men. Um, the lawsuit, I believe, there is still one um, pending because um, Jamie McCracken has refiled the lawsuit that was uh, tossed out. He's allowed to do that. It's a pain in the fucking ass. So, there are links to these articles here in this video's description explaining shit like this. <sighs> and I just don't get why people believe that they will benefit from suing Forrest Fenn's estate. They must be really stupid or they believe that the court system is really stupid. And given that Orenthal Simpson was found not guilty of double murder, so I can agree that juries are stupid, but uh, judges... On the whole, they will, you know, they know lawsuits like this are frivolous. Um, someone I know has sued Forrest Fenn and his, Forrest Fenn's estate because, I'm sorry, not Forrest Fenn's estate, but, um, let's see, Daniel Barbarissi published a book called Chasing the Thrill, wherein Ms. Stephanie 30 Acre was mentioned. And Ms. 30 Acre has sued Barbarissi, asserting that Barbarissi ruined her reputation inside that book. Uh, in reality, Ms. 30 Acre ruined her own reputation, such as it was, or is, and I grieve for her sake. Um, she should not have told Barbarissi what she did tell Barbarissi. And Barbarissi has perfect legal right 
moral right, ethical right, to quote Ms. 30 Acre if she did not want her reputation to be ruined, she should not have spoken with barbarity. Also, she cannot possibly demonstrate to a judge that her reputation was ruined by this book. Um, ruined how? In what way has she suffered a loss? Um, also, I believe that um, I could be wrong. Um, for such a lawsuit to succeed, malice has to be demonstrated on the part of Barbarity. So, yet another nuisance lawsuit, another frivolous lawsuit against Forrest Fenn's estate. By the way, Barbarity's book, Chasing the Thrill, mentions me. And in a humorous and quite insulting way. I mean, I ch chuckled. And it was not actually insulting because it, what he, terrible things that he said about me were and are true. Oh, Barbarossi's book, Chasing the Thrill. Hey, let's see. What else should I follow up with? Um, asshole Terry Coombs asserting fraud. Asshole Jamie McCracken asserting... I don't know what the fuck he's actually asserting when he says that Forrest Fenn moved the treasure four times to keep Jerry McCracken from finding it. Personally. <laughs> uh, I want to mention that many people have insisted that they know precisely where the Forrest Fenn treasure was hidden was placed. <clears throat> and they have picked a spot in Yellowstone National Park based on images posted by the person who actually found the treasure. And they've, pe these people have gone out into the park, looked around <laughs> along the uh, river, and found spots where they're very similar, if not identical, to the images that the treasure founder actually took. And they are full of shit. They do not know where the treasure was hidden. But they, they will defend with their lives, if necessary, that they have found the spot based on these um, questionable images. I mean, none of the images actually fit from what I saw. Yeah. I should, I, I will also point out that about 10 minutes before Forrest Fenn died, he called me, well, he sent an email asking me to visit him, and I knew that it would be a goodbye visit. I mean, one of us was going to die soon, and the odds that Forrest Fenn would, um, was excellent, or more excellent. So, I did go to his house, and I did visit him, and we did say goodbye to each other in our manly ways. Um, and we, we sat and discussed <clears throat> life. Um, previously, in previous visits to Four Sons House, um, by myself and, and with other people um, invited, I always sat on the floor because I'm that kind of person. I mean, you know, I'm more comfortable sitting on the floor than in chairs. And, you know, Forrest Hen saw me doing that and he didn't say anything, even though I, I suspect he thought it was peculiar. Um, people that were, you know, invited and, you know, shared the same living room space, they saw me on the floor, um, you know, being more like a dog, I guess, than a human. They didn't say anything because I guess they expected uh, peculiar behavior from me. Um, but in this case, I actually sat on a chair and, you know, um, discussed like a human to a, a human instead of like a dog to a human. Um, life in general and Forrest Fenn's life in particular. And 
one of the things that I asked Forrest Finn was if he had, you know, what was or are, if any, um, the major regrets that he had in life. And, uh, you know, some philosophers say one should not have any regrets, and, uh, you know, you know, that's looking back in past history and doesn't apply anymore, so you shouldn't have any regrets. To those people, I say, fuck yourselves, please. You know, with a stick, as usual. Pick an eye. And, uh, 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 uh. Um, or maybe it's, I don't know. Uh, uh, anyhow. Um, Barthen did mention some regrets. And the, one of the chief regrets that Forrest Fenn said he um, held is that he wanted to be an artist and not an uh, artifact collector, not an art collector, not an art dealer, um, etc. He wanted to be an artist working in iron and bronze and, you know, uh, a iron right and, you know, an artistic expression working in metals, um, but that doesn't pay the bills. Um, you know, being an artist with a family, your family is going to starve to death, basically. So he did what he did best, and that was finagle deals, um, finding bargains, and uh, selling what he has found for enormous profit. <clears throat> Uh, he had other regrets, like I mentioned. Um, I'm not going to mention other of the larger regrets because that's personal and he would not want me to mention them. Um, for exam example, on a bargain that Forrest Sands has made millions off of, just millions and millions, um, there was a warehouse full of um, art frauds. We're talking... Um, statues that resemble or were identical to what the great masters uh, statue artist you know had created um, there were paintings astounding frauds paintings from the masters that the the technique was identical the overall uh, composition of the artwork was precisely and exactly what the artist, uh, you know, the masters had painted. Um, warehouse full of this stuff. And it was the, the, the fraudulent artworks were created by a really famous um, fraudulent art creator. Um, and he just he would produce a vast amount of flawless uh, reproductions and original <laughs> artwork uh, from the masters who, you know, died anywhere from 3,000 years ago up to, you know, like 30 years ago. So, original Warhols, for example. And um, the person died and he didn't specify the forger died and he didn't specify who owned all of this forgery art you know collection artwork you know did. so <clears throat> the person who owned the warehouse apparently he ended up owning that artwork because nobody would you know claim it and nobody would admit to <laughs> Yeah, these were forgeries. Yeah, I tried to sell them, but, you know, that guy died. So the owner of the warehouse auctioned it off, or planned to auction it off. And Forrest Finn um, heard about these forgeries, and he knew that the forger was an amazing, uh, world-famous forger. And Forrest Finn got the idea that he could sell forgeries, noting that they are forgeries and that they were forged by world famous forger and that they are beautiful um, reproductions and original work, um, but sell them as forgeries. And so for, uh, Forrest Fenn bid on the whole warehouse, the whole thing, just 
everything in the warehouse. And uh, Forrest Fenn successfully sold that inventory as forgeries, as a, a staggering profit. It's just, you know, just, you know, what the hell is he going to do with all the money? So that was his, if I believe that was his first huge success. And he built his, his um, financial you know, empire on forgeries. Um, I wish that I had, you know, bought a forger, forged, you know, painting by, I don't know, uh, Rene or, um, anyhow, uh, Michelangelo, I'm sure, you know, I would get a unique Michelangelo painting, uh, you know, maybe, uh, <coughs> you know, the physique of some, some bottle, you know, his or her chest off and you know like the muscles and anyhow so that is the the summary of what has happened to the forest fen treasure hunt finito done and there are more treasure place uh, people have tra placed <laughs> people have done their own treasure hunts and there's still many out there for people to find and and these treasure hunts have poems leading to or clue poems with clues leading to where the people can find it, the treasure etc etc um so if you're still interested in finding a treasure i'm sure that you can uh, google it or these days bing it <laughs> Um, and find some of the hidden treasures that are still out there. Uh, nothing f as fabulous as Forrest Fenn's treasure. Um, one other note I would like to make is that um, Forrest Fenn owned what appears to be, appeared, no, still appears to be Sitting Bull's tobacco pipe. Um, it cannot be stated with certainty that the tobacco pipe that Forrest Fenn acquired was um, Sidney Bull's pipe, but it looks, um, as far as people can tell, identical to images of the original Sidney Bull's pipe. So the provenance is sketchy. So. Christie's auctioned off that pipe, noting that it, there's a possibility that it is not um, Sitting Bull's actual pipe, and it was a reproduction. And the pipe got, I thought it would sell for at least half a million dollars, but it was auctioned off. Highest bid was $180,000. Um, I also know <coughs> that that pipe was supposed to be returned to the Lakota Sioux in year 1995. Um, the deal had been made. The person who had physical possession of that pipe um, was going to give it back to the Lakota Sioux, but something or I don't, I cannot figure out, I could not find why the pipe was not given back to the tribe and that it ended up in Forrest Fenn's hands. The, um, uh, the pipe was still belonged to Forrest Fenn. He kept it in his um, walk-in vault. And I know it was in there when I visited him, visited him, but I didn't ask to see it, you know, which is, you know, uh, I did not want to get upset at Forest Fen having that pipe and not giving it back to where it belongs. Um, but, you know. So, that rounds up and that summarizes and that completes the status of the Forest Fen hidden treasure and the hunt for that treasure. So, updated.